without a proper understanding of the concepts behind fat loss and an effective fat loss program to follow, losing body fat and keeping it off can be extremely challenging. Through scientific research and practical recommendations, this video series will give you everything you need to set up your own fat loss program so you can get as lean and as ripped as you want. This first video of this series will cover how to set up a fat loss diet. This will fully explain how to calculate total calories and distribute them into protein, carbohydrates, and fats. While resistance training and cardio are also important factors of a fat loss program and will be covered in future videos, they are secondary to a proper diet, and I'll explain why later in this video. The main goal of a fat loss diet is to have the dieter consume fewer calories than they burn. This is referred to as a negative energy balance or a caloric deficit. To better understand what these terms mean, we're going to quickly answer three main questions. The first one is, what is a calorie? The second is, what is energy balance? And the third is, what is body fat? So a calorie is a unit of energy, and that's very important to remember. It's defined as the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water through one degree Celsius. Energy balance plays the largest role in weight gain or weight loss. It refers to the balance between the amount of energy burned versus the amount of energy consumed. A 2012 consensus statement by Kevin Hall and others covered the different ways that the body burns energy. Even while resting, the body is using energy for things like brain function, blood circulation, and breathing. This is referred to as the resting metabolic rate and accounts for up to two-thirds of energy expenditure. The body also requires energy to digest food. And lastly, energy is required for both exercise and non-exercise related physical activity. Energy in refers to the amount of energy consumed through food and drink, and this can vary greatly depending on somebody's diet. Body fat is a form of stored energy. When someone consumes more calories than their body needs, the excess calories are stored as body fat. By staying in a caloric deficit, meaning you're consuming fewer calories than your body needs, your body will start to break down stored body fat for the additional energy, resulting in less of it on your body. The first step to setting up the diet is to calculate maintenance calories. Maintenance calories is the amount of calories a dieter needs to maintain their current body weight. This will serve as a starting point or a baseline that we can make adjustments from. A simple way to calculate your maintenance calories is to multiply your current body weight in pounds by 14. For example, if somebody weighed 170 pounds and they multiplied that by 14, their maintenance calories would be around 2380. Once we've established a dieter's maintenance calories, we then need to reduce that number in order to establish a deficit. How big of a calorie deficit is best for the dieter depends on several things. This study that was done on elite athletes compared a 20% to a 30% calorie deficit to see the effects that it had on body composition and performance. While a 30% calorie deficit led to greater fat loss, it also resulted in less muscle and strength gains during the diet when compared to the 20% calorie deficit. So a general recommendation for those with a higher percentage of body fat is to take a more aggressive approach to dieting, which is going to be 25% and above. For athletes and those with a lower body fat percentage, taking a more moderate approach can be useful to help preserve muscle and performance. This can be done with a 10 to 20% calorie reduction. Once we've established how much of a deficit is appropriate, we need to subtract that from the maintenance calories. So if we were to establish a 20% calorie deficit, we would subtract that from our maintenance and we would end up around 1,904 calories. So once we have our dieting calories established, we need to distribute them into protein, carbohydrates, and fats. The first macronutrient to establish is your protein. And I actually did a full video on this subject, which I'll put a link to in the description below. While the recommended intake is around 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, relatively lean individuals should consume around 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight while they are dieting. So if the dieter was 170 pounds and was to consume 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, they would simply consume 170 grams of protein. Now that the protein intake is established, let's move on to carbohydrates and fats. Several studies that looked at high carb diets and compared them to high fat diets found that weight change over time was similar when calories were equal. So which of the two you decide to consume more of should really come down to personal preference and what's going to help you stick to your diet. 
The reason for this is that the body is adaptive and will adapt to the fuel source it's being fed, whether it's carbohydrates or fats. A general recommendation for dietary fat intake is between 20 and 25% of total calories. 20% from our dieting calories gives us 380 calories, and dividing that by 9 will give us a total amount of grams we need to consume from dietary fats. Once we've established our protein intake and our dietary fat intake, the remaining calories will be used for carbohydrates. Now that we know the calories being used for our protein intake and the calories being used for our dietary fat intake, we need to subtract that from our total calories so we can use the remainder for carbohydrates. By dividing the remaining calories by 4, this will give you the grams of carbohydrates you need to consume. Once this is done, you now have a number for your protein, fats, and your carbs. So let's quickly recap these calculations and bring everything together. So the first thing we did was establish our maintenance calories by multiplying total body weight by 14. We then decided on the amount of a deficit we want to establish and subtracted that from the total calories. Once we calculated our diet and calories, we then established our protein intake, which was around one gram of protein per pound of body weight when dieting. We then calculated our dietary fat intake based on a percentage of our total calories. By subtracting the amount of calories needed for our protein and the amount of calories needed for our fats, we use our remaining calories for our carbohydrates. We now have our calculated numbers for our protein, carbohydrates, and fats. One way to cross-check these numbers is to multiply your protein and your carbs by 4 and multiply your dietary fats by 9, add them together, and see where your total calories is. It should be very similar to the total calories that you calculated at the beginning. So we're going to look at an example of why diet is more important than training when it comes to fat loss. The food choices made in a single meal can have a major impact in the amount of calories that are being consumed. So dieter one has chosen a low calorie high protein lunch with water and has decided to eat a couple small pieces of chocolate. While dieter two got a burger and fries, a pop, and ended up eating the entire chocolate bar. The calorie differences between both of these meals is 1,250 calories. Burning that amount of energy through resistance training and cardio would require hours in the gym. It is much more time and energy efficient to make smart food choices. The Made Gains Macro Calculator is a free tool that you can use to calculate your calories and your macronutrients. Now that you have a thorough understanding of the concepts we've discussed, using this is going to be much easier. I'll put the download link to this in the description below. So the next video in this video series will be about dieting strategies that will help you stick to your diet. So if you'd like to see that video and other videos like it, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below because that helps me out and helps this channel to grow. You can also find me on Instagram where I'm always posting science-based information on how to build muscle, increase strength, and how to lose body fat. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.